We're gonna do things slightly differently today. Uh, I have a Duvd DVD, Top Gear, the worst car in the history of the world, which apparently the Lexus SC430 is, which I can reveal after driving it is complete bullshit. This car is actually a bit of all right. I also want to go through a Reddit post that I put up yesterday. Shooting a video on an SC430 tomorrow and want to know your thoughts on the car. What have we got? The Chinese chicken, a car loved by everyone who owns and buys one, hated by the internet and Top Gear. The SC430 is the biggest disappointment in Lexus history, IMO. Bulletproof drivetrain, very underwhelming performance. Now the reason people hate this car is because one, Clarkson told them to hate this car, and two, because of the underwhelming performance, but people don't realize what this car is. It is not a sports car, people. You're not supposed to be going sideways around corners. It is a luxury grand touring car, and that's what it does very well. Now I've got that off my chest, let us move on and let us go for a little drive, shall we? The SC430 was designed to be the jewel of Lexus and in the words of Mr. Yasushi Nakagawa, the car's chief engineer, the finest all-round luxury convertible. This car was actually Lexus's first ever convertible. We've got a 4.3 V8 underneath. It's not a snarling, oh, I want to tear your face off V8. It is buttery smooth, which is accompanied in this car by a wonderful six-speed automatic gearbox. The SC430's 4.3-litre, 32-valve aluminium V8 produces 282 horsepower and 317 pound-foot or 430 newton-meters of torque, which will launch the near 1.8-ton Luxo drop-top to 62 in 6.2 seconds and onto a top speed of 155. We've got super soft steering. You don't feel much of the road underneath you, which in a sports car would really piss me off but I'm in a Lexus. I don't want to feel what's going on. I want to waft from business meeting to brothel like that. The ride is a little bit jiggly, especially now with the roof down, but with the roof up, the car feels a lot more taut, a lot more tight, and it doesn't jiggle about so much. We've got a few potholed roads here, but it glosses over everything. And the reason why the ride on this particular car is so good is because owner Lee Jackson has changed the run flats to normal rubber. This is also the facelift model, which means that there's been loads of suspension work that's been done. In September 2006, Lexus introduced new shock absorbers to calm the SC430's ride, and also gave the car a new six-speed auto and a slightly fresher face. That's enough from me for a while. Here's what owner Lee Jackson has to say about life with an SC430. I've only owned it a short while, but I've found it so far very easy to live with. I've had no issues with not having enough space for my needs. I love the leather interior, the lovely comfortable seats, more comfortable than my chair at home actually, I find. Favourite part about this car is that you can cruise along with a roof down at 65 miles an hour and hold a conversation. If you're wondering where the styling influence came from, because I know that the internet likes to think that the SC430 was inspired by a farm animal, the answer is actually the French. Riviera, which explains why the car looks like a land yacht. And personally, seeing the car in the flesh, I actually think it looks pretty good. I like the look of this. Now in loads of pictures, you're going to see a car that's kind of a light beige, light brown colour, and that car looks like dirt. Just an ugly Lexus turd. But in this colour, in this lovely silver with this really nice tan leather, it's not as offensive to the eye as when it is when you look at it on the internet. So again, internet, calm down, okay? In terms of Lexus luxuries, the SC430 gets some really cool stuff, including leather memory seats, a wicked Mark Levinson audio system, a steering wheel that automatically retracts to help get your belly in and out of the seat, as well as a climate control system that adjusts airflow and temperature automatically, differentiating between top-up and top-down driving needs. As for the wood finish, you have a choice of either bird's eye maple or walnut. If you don't want to see all these things on the dashboard, then you literally just press a button and then this walnut wood just comes down beautifully. It's just so over-engineered in here. I also really appreciate that I've got a little button down here that opens up a hatch and there I can have my pound coins or my pennies. And if a poor person comes up to you, you simply open up the hatch, take out your pound coin and you throw it and then they will run. They will chase the pound coin. At the turn of the century, the SC430 cost £51,000, which was actually a pretty good deal when you know that the similarly spec Jaguar XK8 cost £61,000, 
while a Mercedes SL500 would set you back 70 grand. I paid £11,000 for this car when I bought it. I was also looking at the Mercedes SL500. I was interested in that car, but this car won out for me at the end of the day because I was just worried about reliability issues with the other car. This being a Lexus, fingers crossed, should be bulletproof. I think the car has a bad reputation. I think when it was first released, it was compared a lot to cars like the Porsche 911 and the Mercedes SL500 and a lot of cars with other sort of racing pedigree. This was never meant to be a race car. Yeah, I think the guys at Top Gear done me a favor actually. I don't think I could have ever afforded this car if it wasn't for the fact that they gave the car a bad reputation including calling it the worst car in the world, of course. <laughs> if the Lexus SC430 is now on your radar, then here's what you should know if you plan to check one out for yourself. Head gaskets have been known to fail because of low coolant from potential lower radiator leaks, so check the levels, while O2 sensors in the exhaust can go bad too. Clunky suspension is a good sign of perish bushes from the SC430's hard ride, thanks in part to those dreaded run-flat tyres. And as always, check underneath for rust around the subframe and ensure that the folding roof works as it should, because sensors can malfunction. One more thing to check is the Mark Levinson sound system. It's the centrepiece of the car for many owners, so rattles or faults should be fixed before buying. Apart from these things, the SC430 is solid and hugely over-engineered, meaning you should be able to enjoy thousands of trouble-free miles. As for prices, expect to pay anywhere between four and seven thousand pounds for early 2002 to 2005 cars, and between seven thousand and fifteen thousand pounds for 2005 all the way to the late 2009 cars with low miles. So if you're looking for something like a Mercedes SL or a 6 Series convertible, then have a look at this, the SC430, because it is luxurious, it is reliable, and I'm also a big fan of how relaxed I feel behind the wheel. Don't think of it as something that you can attack B-roads and don't be disappointed with the fact that it won't set your world on fire and it won't give you the fizz when you put your foot on the accelerator. It's also fairly unique because how many of these things do you see on the road? And for the price, I can't actually think of another car that gives you this amount of luxury, this amount of dependability, and this amount of style. So I guess in summary, to James May and Jeremy Clarkson who labelled this car the worst car in the world, go f Next Friday on Automotive Misfits, the Alpha 147 GTA. Please don't like it, please don't like it, please don't like it, please don't like it. Oh, shit. For more episodes, click here. And to subscribe to Car Throttle, click here. Right, hungry? Time for chicken. Oh, chicken. Yeah, chicken. Mmm. <laughs>